I did a video last week on direct linking, and really what I was after was trying to get a decent cloud storage service to allow me to direct link to a file so that people can click on a download and have it pop up directly in their browser as save as. Pretty simple ask, really, but not so easy because uh, cloud storage services like your kind of consumer sort of Dropbox and Google Drive and whatever, they're not really designed for that. There are ways you can do it. There are ways around it in certain cases, but they're not really designed for that. And Miguel came back to me, so thank you for the comments, and pointed me to Amazon. And I'd totally forgotten about Amazon. And it's kind of strange because I do actually have an Amazon S3 account from some previous uh, work I was doing in a previous job. And I was sort of looking into something, so I signed up for one just so I could have a play around and look what it was all about. That was back in 2013. But the account's still active, and I've gone back to it yesterday and just have started having a play around with it a bit more. Really, it's kind of... I'll just bring it on screen here. Really, it's kind of a bit excessive. Uh, as far as traffic-wise and as far as exactly what it is, it's sort of, on one in one respect, excessive for my needs – on another respect, is perfect for my needs. And the reason it's perfect is because it gives me that level of control. This is, this actually reminds me of cameras. You know, it's I, I, with cameras, I really like to have the, the buttons, the control, the ability to change the various stuff. Although arguably, you know, certain types of cameras are excessive for what I need to do. And this is sort of the same because the Amazon S3 storage platform is the platform that is used by companies transferring petabytes of data. I mean, ridiculous quantities of data. I'm not looking to do that. But that's okay, because you can sign up for an account. You can have an S3 storage account, and it doesn't have to be big. You know, it's entirely scale scalable. It's like a domestic electricity or water bill or whatever. You pay for what you use. So it's not sold to you with a front end, particularly, although there is this kind of very basic uh, front end, and you can do stuff through the Amazon front end. Uh, but it's sold to you without that. You don't have that sort of beautiful user interface, and you don't have a fixed service price. You pay for what you use. So if I go to my dashboard here, my billing dashboard, obviously it has virtually nothing on it, but I did start transferring some stuff yesterday and storing some stuff. So it has a forecasted spend for the month based on what's on it at the moment, which is hardly anything. And uh, and then there, it's split down across sort of what you're storing on S3, your data transfer costs. And it says at the moment, um, I've spent 12 pence, which, well, as long as this sort of price stays within the amount that I would pay for a... Um, direct link kind of service through Dropbox or something, then, you know, I see it as, as an extremely sensible approach. So this video really is just me gathering some of my thoughts. It's just me talking about what I've kind of picked up over the last sort of 28, 40, 24, 48 hours. And uh, it's, I don't know how long it's going to be. I was going to do this as a live stream, actually, and just so I could just waffle on for 45 minutes like people do on live streams. But um I'm not. I'm doing it as a video, so I probably will edit, edit it down a little bit. Uh, so if you're happy to listen to me chatting about Amazon S3, because this is just going to be a brief kind of overview and a look at, a look at it initially, then um, stay with me. <laughs> and if not, <laughs> then you might want to go somewhere, somewhere else, because I don't, I don't think this is a, a topic. I think it's quite a specialist topic, this, really. It's, a, it's one of those projects that I've kind of grabbed onto, and I'm, uh, I'm now sort of, it's now kind of snowballing a bit and, and um, is, going, is becoming more and more complicated. If I look at the services that you can have on Amazon, on AWS, I mean... It is incredible. You, you, know, you see this huge list of stuff. I don't know what half of these things are. So I'm just going to go tick -tick 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 -tick, zoom in here. And that's all I'm interested in. Storage, S3. <laughs> I don't really care about the rest of it. At least now, anyway. Uh, yeah, as I say, I don't even know what any of this is. What's, what's Elastic Beanstalk? <laughs> Not a clue. Athena? No, don't know. Anyway. I'm after storage, and I'm after S3. So if I go to my S3 area, uh, the storage on S3 is in in buckets. So you can create up to 100 buckets, I think it is, 
for each account. I'm sure you could probably request more if you went to Amazon. Uh, and within each of those buckets, uh, you you can then put in objects, and you can those objects are either files or they're folders. But folders don't really exist in in Amazon. Everything's just an object with an ID, I think. Uh, so although they give you the concept of folders because people are very familiar with that and people can sort of mentally relate to that, they don't actually really exist at all. That's a bit weird, but um, I can go with that. I'm happy with that. Right now, I've given myself two two buckets that I'm working with. So you have you set this up and you have a uh, an access key and you set up a secret key for... Uh, for your, um, not for your buckets, for your account. And you uh, apply those, um, you have to sort of enter those into any, you know, if you were accessing it via any other software, you'd need to use that access key and uh, secret key. And I've got one for a backup, and I'll, t get, I'll go over this in a separate video, because what I've, what I also did yesterday was just wrote a really basic shell script to allow a cron job to run each night, which backs up my web server. One of the things I talked about last week was the fact that backing up my web server was a, extremely costly. Now, I don't want to, actually, I don't want to back up the whole web server because I'm happy setting that up again. You know, if, if something were to go terribly wrong, um, I'm happy setting that up again. What I don't want to lose is the content. So all I'm doing is backing up a home directory or a couple of home directories and um, transferring them now via S3 command to Amazon S3. And that works really well. I'll go over that, as I say, in a separate video because that's a little bit more specialist, more kind of command line stuff. Even more dull than this, arguably. <laughs> but um, but either way, if this is if this is the stuff you need to do, this isn't dull at all. And I was excited by this yesterday. This is kind of, this sort of stuff really uh, really does um, excite me. Hmm, strange. Yeah. So uh, as far as files I want to share or files I want to have downloads to, I have my sort of video in here and so I've put some Inferno stuff on here um, and I've got some content in here so fairly large stuff you can see from the sizes here this is you know 3.5 gig for a file so you can upload stuff on the website and you can do various things on the website you know you can view the properties of the file and you can change permissions and details but I would really recommend as Miguel did the use of S3 browser which is a graphical user interface a GUI for um, I assume for various platforms but I, the one I have here is for Windows and you can see that it just looks it's basically the same structure as here we've got our two buckets there are certain naming conventions around buckets by the way you can't just sort of name them anything uh, and they are unique they're across the globe so they um, they they cannot exist already this is really a little bit like um, any kind of file transfer program in a way. It's, it allows you ways of managing the files um, very, very nicely. And it's, for me, this is a, a beautiful piece of software. I like my software to be one way or another. I don't know if anyone's with me on this. I like my software to either be wonderfully minimalist and clean and modern and really nicely designed, or I like it to be this, where it's kind of, no frills, not really bothered about design. It's there to do a job, and it's kind of like your putty, um, your FileZilla, uh, or S3 browser. And uh, all we need to do to put something online, I'll just um, do an example here. Actually, um, if I just if I do a new folder, and funnily enough, I'm going to call this test. Wow, that's original, isn't it? go into that folder, but as I say, it's not really a folder, it's just an object uh, within my S3 storage. And I can uh, do an upload of files, and I'll just pick a file from here, start uploading that now. And what it does, the software splits it into eight chunks, and I've set the chunk size to be 100 megabytes. And so each of those chunks are now starting to upload as they get created. So this will be, well, I suppose hammering my upload, um, but it still will not go above what my upload can do. Uh, in fact, I tried this originally on two threads, 
and that maxed out my upload anyway. So the speed is fantastic to Amazon. It's great. You know, the storage is is local. It's I think it, there is one in e, in London now. There's one in Frankfurt. There's one in London. There's one in Ireland. So it's all local stuff. Uh, though it is global, of course. You know, it gets mirrored across the globe because it's enormous. If I go to my whoa, why can't I see it on there? Test manager performance. Here we go. So if I go to my Ethernet, I have a 20 megabit upload and I am sending a consistent, well, you can see it's absolutely maxed out because it obviously, as, with, as the way TCP IP works, I've got to receive a certain amount and yeah, solid. That's what I would have liked to have seen on Mediafire. Hello, Mediafire. What's up with your storage? Well, funny I said that, actually, because it got me thinking about how this works. And I'll just go into a little bit more detail around this. So if I go back to my storage here and choose something that's already been put up, you can see that the storage class is set to standard. Now, Amazon offers three levels of storage class, and the cost that you pay, the amount you pay, sorry, the cost for that varies depending on the storage class you use. Um, so this is standard, and that's the highest price. Probably, again, not required in my case. I think I will probably, in future, go for standard IA, which is standard infrequent access. So it really has the has a lower cost per gigabyte of storage, but it's um, you know not designed with the same kind of speed of access. It doesn't have quite the same kind of trans. Uh, well, actually, no, it does have the same transfer uh, speed. I'm not absolutely sure yet what the difference between those two are, but I think it's it's designed it's designed slightly differently, so it's not quite as premium as standard. I don't know. You read up on it online. I, I'm not again. Uh, just to stress in this video, I'm not claiming to be an expert. I've been looking at this for a day. I am working on this. This is completely a work in progress, and I'm just really doing a video to talk about it. And then there's uh, standard. Oh no, then there's a kind of redundancy one, which I think is called Glacier now. Um, but it's, it's just like a redundant storage, which costs even less, but is not designed to be accessed really at all. So if you did backups, I suppose you could do put them in that type of storage. And if I go to my backup stuff, my backup script is set to put them in a standard IA. So that costs me less to store, but I don't have the flexibility to do as much with it. So yeah, I just thought of one of the things. I think if you put this in as a backup, this storage is now kind of the amount I use is now kind of fixed for a monthly charge. So I am now sort of committed or something to, to the fact that I'm storing 1.82 gig for this file for a monthly subscription. If you use standard storage, you can sort of shift and move your stuff around and it kind of all is reflected in your billing appropriately. I don't know, maybe that's not true. But I did read that yesterday. So on each of uh, on all of these files, you can sh in within S uh, S3 browser. And yes, again, you can do most of this online as well, but you can change. Da, 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 da. Let me have a look. So you can on each of these files, you can um, change your permissions. Uh, this is standard permissions stuff, you know, sort of seven 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 and six 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 and all that type of thing. You, if you, if I wanted to set this so it was accessible by the world, I'd have to click on here so it's read only by everybody and you can edit all your http headers and i will come back to that in a separate video because that is incredibly useful and essential for what i want to do and not only can you change your headers you can have default headers within the software as well so they get applied automatically it's brilliant perfect for what i need Uh, your, your properties of the file in here, all sorts of stuff. So really, it, it is not user-friendly unless you're kind of, uh, I guess, a little bit technical because you're not being presented with something that's super simple to use. Uh, and but, it, but as far as functionality is concerned and as far as being able to do what I want, it's wonderful. So, yeah, I mean, it exists in Google too, Google Cloud Storage. I did look at that briefly, but um, because I already had an account with this and because there was, this is so well supported, uh, Amazon S3, there's, also, there's so much stuff out there, so much software and so uh, many 
some so much good support in, on Google, you know, as far as um, searches and forums to, for people helping each other with uh, issues. It's it's great and um, well worth a look. So we go just a, an initial look on the. I'll, I'll call this kind of part two of direct linking, I suppose. And I'm going to do two more videos on this. I'm going to do one more about my uh, backup and how I've created my backup if you are interested in having a method to create a backup. And I'm going to do a separate video on creating a proper direct download link. So not opening the file, actually downloading the file. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> not sure what there was to enjoy, but um, I will speak to you soon. Bye for now.